let everybody join. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's presentation, uh, which I am going to pull up on screen so you all can see what we're doing here. Um, our topic today is introduction to the Fan Energy Index, also commonly referenced to as FEI. So you will hear that frequently during today's presentation. I am Lisa Cherney, the Education Manager for AMCA International, and I'll be moderating the webinar. Um, just a few housekeeping notes that you're familiar with by this point if you've been in other sessions. Everyone is muted during these this session. Um, if you do want to submit questions for our presenter, you can go to the left side of your screen under the Q&A icon and go ahead and send those through at any time during the program. We are recording today's session. The recording and the PDF version of the slides will be posted on the Odell website within 48 hours. And if you are with us today and are interested in earning PDH credit, please remember that you do need to stay on for the entire hour and you do need to complete the survey that will be sent to you one hour after the conclusion of our presentation. And even if you're not here for PDH credit, please feel free to complete that survey as well. Um, again, for a Q&A segment, which will be at the end, go ahead and send your questions over at any time. If you happen to prefer to voice or verbally ask your question, you do have a raised hand icon that you can click and we will acknowledge you and turn your microphone on. So that is also an option for asking questions. Um, in order to issue professional development hour credits, uh, we do have to mention that AMCA International has met the standards and requirements of the registered continuing education program. So credit earned will be reported to RCEP and you will receive a certificate of completion issued to the email that you have used to register for this program. Um, but as such, RCEP does not endorse any content. They do not approve any content that we present through these programs. And a quick disclaimer that the information we're presenting today is provided by AMCA as an educational service only. It is not intended to serve as professional engineering and or manufacturing advice. The views and opinions expressed are those of the presenter alone. They do not necessarily represent the views of AMCA International. And in making today's activity available, we are not endorsing, sponsoring, or recommending any particular company, product, or application. And please note that under no circumstances, including negligence, shall AMCA be liable for any damages arising out of anyone's reliance upon or use of the content contained in this webinar. And the program is copyrighted by AMCA, so please do not reproduce, distribute, share, or display the materials without written permission of AMCA International. So the boring stuff is over, and now we get to the point of why we're all here. I would like to introduce to you all our presenter for today, Mark Bublitz. Mark is the Executive Vice President of Engineering for the New York Blower Company based here in Illinois. He joined New York Blower in 1984. He has a bachelor's in mechanical engineering from Valparaiso University in Indiana. He also has a master's of mechanical engineering from Purdue University and an MBA from Indiana Wesleyan University. Mark has done postgraduate studies in management of engineering and technology, and he holds various certifications and awards related to technology and extensive participation in this industry. And he is also responsible for engineering and industry interests related to energy efficiency regulation. And Mark has a wealth of knowledge to bring to today's topic. So with that, I will stop sharing my screen so Mark can take over. And Mark, thank you for joining us for today's presentation. Good morning, everyone. Lisa, thank you for that fine introduction. And um, 
you know, you're always supposed to start these things out with some point of humor, but I apologize. I'm an engineer who's gone to the dark side of management. So I am your self-deprecating humorous introduction today. So uh, with that, um, I don't have a lot of jokes, but I got a lot of stories. And one of the people I rep uh, greatly respect was a guy named Ken Blanchard. And Ken was, um, he was teaching at a university. And on the first day, he handed out all the answers to the final examination to all of his students. And as you can imagine, all of the fellow professors were livid. It's like, hey, you can't do that. And then, but Ken, Ken replied very calmly. He said, well, not only am I going to give the answers, but I'm going to spend the time over the, over the semester teaching them how to come up with the answers. So um, with that as an intro, we're going to take everything that maybe you hopefully have absorbed over the time uh, to date, and we'll package it up into this energy efficiency metric. And um, there's a lots of details and complications in it related to FEI. Um, but really, we want to focus on the three simple things that are that are just so important that if the if you keep these things in your mind, um, it'll be a success and it'll kind of guide it'll guide everything you really need to know. And then you can ex explore it, whatever depth you choose to pursue. So those three things are the point of our presentation today. Uh, one, let's describe FEI. Let's let's figure out what it is, um, how it packages into regulation now understand our audience is not necessarily native to the continental U.S. And, and we've had some things kind of we had an election in the U.S. and some regulation got put on hold. I believe uh, in particular Canada kind of kept moving. So there's some of these areas are not necessarily synchronized. But I think how a metric is used in regulation remains a pertinent uh, conversation. And then um, let's investigate why FEI kind of works best as an energy efficiency metric. We'll dig into a few of the details and because um, I guess we could consider this engineering content. We should do at least a little math for our PDH credit. All right, I will, uh, with those three sections, I'll stop, um, pause briefly and check in. I do a check in so you can post any questions while you're going and, um, and then we'll wrap up. So uh, buckle up and here we go. Let's talk about FEI. So to get started, um, Fan energy index, what is it? Well, it's an efficiency metric or a measure, but it's not just a fan measure, it's a fan system energy efficiency metric. So it's the fan plus the things that um, drive the fan. So uh, our, our three nuggets, fan system energy efficiency metric, and always remember, uh, you're gonna get tired of hearing me say that greater, the, greater than or equal to one is good, less than one is bad. So that implies that there's a ratio, and that ratio is uh, your fan system efficiency compared to the fan efficiency of some reference fan system. Someone, in particular a regulator, has decided what the fan system for your application should look like and how efficient it should be. So then really, your target, your goal, is to be at least as efficient as the regulatory requirement. So the numerator efficiency, your fan system efficiency is greater than the fan efficiency of some reference fan system. Okay. Greater than or equal to one is good. Less than one is bad. So there you go. That's the basics of FEI. Now, how that implements itself. What does it mean to be efficient? What's efficiency? What do we call efficiency? Well, efficiency generally is power out over power in. So what is the power out of a fan? Well, air power in general is flow times pressure. And we can, we can quibble a little, about, a little bit about how, what components of pressure, but in general, flow times pressure is power. And that's what fans deliver. They move volumes of gas at a certain pressure. Um, and then what goes, what's the input? Well, historically, this little red arrow uh, connected to the, the shaft and the, and the drive uh, component there um, without a label is historically where the fan um, industry measured power because the fan industry really isn't responsible for motors or drive systems or whatever, whatever, um, how you choose to start and stop the fan system. That's, and there's typically those are separated into different specifications frequently. So historically, uh, the fan industry has stuck with the fan. 
uh, our friends in the uh, energy advocate environment um, don't care about that. They care about carbon and they care about the bits of electrons flowing out of the wall to get to the fan system. So they're in, there in general, the interest is uh, the input is the electrical power that makes the thing go. So over there on the right side, fan electrical input power, there's a, there's a fancy term for that called FEP. So um, output over input, air power out, electrical power in, that's the ratio. That's our efficiency. Okay. Uh, fan system efficiency um, it might make sense to me as an engineer, uh, but it's not, um, uh, it doesn't really get you to, po to power, right, if something's efficient. So you can do a little math on this. And you can say, you know, if we, uh, if the flow and pressure is specified, then if the fan output requirements are specified, then we can kind of do a little math. And instead of saying the ratio of fan system efficiencies, I can change it to be the ratio of the power. However, when you do the math, it flips, it flips the components. So this can be written as the fan system electrical input power for some reference system divided by your fan system electrical power. Now remember, greater than one is good, less than one is bad. Uh, so for this ratio to be, to maintain above one, we make our system, the fan, your fan system electrical input power has to be less than the fan system electrical input power of a reference fan system. So the denominator needs to be smaller than the numerator. Now the numerator tends to be fixed because that's the, the reference system. So the smaller we make the electrical input power, the greater FEI is. So this all just in general, this big picture opinion kind of makes sense. Okay. So I've um, packaged that up. So uh, what is FEI? Fan system electrical input power of a reference system divided by our, your, my, whatever, fan system electric input power, and that number needs to stay above one. And um, there's some the commentary down below. The FEI is defined as a ratio. It goes through it again. So an important point is this is this is being adopted in regulatory language as the metric that will be used. So um, it's got inertia. Okay. Now, FEI, in addition to be a fan system metric, it is an operating condition metric, right? So um, the fan needs, in particular, flow pressure and density. So once the flow pressure and density is defined, then the reference fan efficiency requirement and the corresponding FEP can be computed. And then our application needs to be matched to that performance point. And then you then you can do the math. You can you can say, all right, well, there's um, the reference systems power requirement for me to deliver, or for for you to deliver the fan system that delivers an equivalent performance condition. It will take it will require us this much electricity, and we can compare those two, and that's FEI. So the important point is, a fan does not have an FEI rating by itself. A fan has an FEI rating at an operating condition or a fan system. So that's kind of important. Now, the other ramification is it's not just it's not just a label you can stick on a fan and put it in a box without the operating condition. And um, FEI is a map. It applies anywhere the fan can operate and anywhere the fan system can operate. So this has benefits and drawbacks. The, the, the benefit is you can um, estimate um, your right from a regulatory perspective, you can you can create a, uh, a map of optimal and acceptable performance areas. Uh, the downside is it's may, way harder to do than just sticking a label on a product and saying this is number seven or this is number nine. All right, so there's FEI. So here's our three keys to remember. FEI is the ratio of the power consumed by some reference fan to our fan. It's an operating point efficiency metric. It's not attached just to the fan. It requires an operating condition with it. And never forget for now, the regulatory bodies may change it, but for now, above one is good, 
and below one is bad. So I'm going to check in with Lisa. If there aren't any questions to date, we'll keep moving. So there's the broad picture of FEI. And let's talk about how this packages up with regulation. And, and I'll, I'll kind of apologize in advance. If, in fact, if anybody wants to throw some chat notes in, um, I, I only know that our friends up north, their regulatory um, uh, bodies, people, factory, has continued to march down the, the regulatory um, trail. And so there's, um, there's I'll, I'll remember to march through this. So, um, the U.S. Department of Energy uh, regulates appliances, and they've determined that fans with electric motors are an appliance. It's not quite a toaster, but they've they've um, uh, determined that. So, so and that law has held up. So fans and uh, commercial industrial fans and blowers fall under the purview of the Department of Energy. And uh, this all started with regulation of electric motors, EPCA, in 1975. And then once the motors regulation had begun, uh, the DOE said, well, what's what's a motor connected to? So off they went. And after many, many years, we have finally arrived at fans and blowers. So if you bothered to search for the Department of Energy and went into the commercial and industrial products appliance regulation website, you would find that there is a fans and blowers entry and we are chugging along. <clears throat> and this has been, this has been um, going along, going on for some time, 20, 2013, 2014. And um, if you'll recall, we had an election in 2016 and uh, as a result, all regulatory uh, activity in the U.S. was suspended. And then there was some whatever. Um, so it was suspended and the state of California kind of said, um, well, we're not really happy with uh, the U.S. as a whole suspending its regulatory efforts, so we're going to keep going. So the California Energy Commission under California Title 20 said, well, we're going to keep going with the regulatory effort. So um, they're marching along. So uh, regardless of the regulatory channel, uh, this is kind of a, well, I got it as a quote from somewhere, but um, it appears FEI will be the metric measure of fan energy efficiency used in government regulation of fans and blowers. Uh, for this reason, it's important for us to understand what FEI is and how it works. So that is the kind of the motivation for us to have this talk and to kind of figure out what's going on. And um, let's give you a little, a little background, a little history and kind of how we arrive at why FEI works, what we think is the best. Um, so in the beginning, there was fan efficiency. Well, in the beginning, there was fan efficiency. There was a total efficiency. There's static efficiency, mechanical efficiency. But um, in an effort to come up with a, a metric, uh, FEG was the previous uh, metric, and it was deployed in a series of uh, AMCA and ISO standards. Uh, fan efficiency grade is a single point metric. In other words, it, it's the the FEG is computed at the fan's point of peak mechanical efficiency. So it's only, um, it's only one point. Uh, it's only the fan. Uh, it doesn't accommodate motors and drives. There was a FMEG, which was an attempt to, to incorporate that. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's only one point. So what do you do when the fan operates at not one point? Uh, uh, FEI is now the baseline is being incorporated in baseline energy code. So 90.1, it's in the IECC, and that's marching along. And then it's also made its way into green building codes. So um, ASHRAE and I, ASHRAE 189, and then um, IGCC. So it's, it's, uh, it's, I don't want to say infecting, it's permeating the, the um, regulatory um baseline so it's also there you go there's another list of model energy codes third party ratings so iecc there's some links you can find now one of the challenges we have in the us is is um the department of energy has uh not necessarily paused but well we had this lull 
So some of the states have, have started their own action. So um, Florida's moving, Oregon's got some stuff, stuff going, and then California uh, is um, adding FEI requirements to Title 24. Or, so Title 20 is the appliance regulation. It's the equivalent of the, the U.S. Department of Energy um, appliance regulation. And Title 24 applies to systems. So this is made possibly more to this audience's um, uh, purview in that Title 24, uh, small air systems or rooftop ventilators or rooftop air systems, things like that. So um, California's hinted or implied that FEI is moving into that uh, standard also. Okay. So how does, how do you, how do we get how do we calculate FEI? How does a rate? How does the regulator look at FEI? Well, all right. So to get to FEI, you got to conduct a test. I need a product. I need a test. Okay. Well, that's AMCA two ten. Uh, but now the per our picture, right? We've all there's a drive system, so we got to deal with that. Um, and then two hundred eight says, all right. Well, two hundred two ten plus two hundred seven. That'll get you like the bits. And then 208 tells you how to calculate if you had to take all those bits. And then 211, there's a few more steps on, on how to deal with FBI ratings and what, how, what do you do? How do you take a surveillance test and compare it to uh, a claim and do some other things? So uh, what that adds up to um, is regulator fatigue, right? To, have, to ask someone in, in a regulatory environment that's regulatory a a wide diverse inventory of products to understand this level of technical expertise. Um, it's too much. So enter AMCA standard 214, test procedure for cataloging, calculating uh, fan energy index for commercial and industrial fans and blowers. So 214, its intent was to package uh, these um, various standards together and to provide a single document uh, with references out to the other document doc, pertinent standards to um, really kind of guide the regulator regulators through uh, this morass of um, multiple standards, which if you're in the fan industry for any period of time, this all kind of becomes second nature. But so that's the single standard that um, that is meant to get us from a test to a to a um, FEI measurement and calculation. All right, let's see. My little panel, I don't see any questions, but I will pause. So we talked about FEI and um, greater than greater than or equal to one, good. Less than one, bad. Uh, we kind of talked about how FEI kind of packages itself up into uh, a regulatory approach. And now let's get into a little bit of the nitty gritty of um, uh, the mechanics of FEI. And like, how do you actually, how do, how do you come up with this number? And what does it mean? All right. So um, the kind of the things we'll talk about with FBI efficiency is obviously important. So we want to capture this thing called efficiency. And um, uh, something that uh, a coin I phrase, a phrase I've coined is the peculiar nature of fans. And why is this so much more complicated than the other, those other hundreds of things that have been regulated to date? Uh, okay, so I'll come back around to that. So let's, uh, let's start with a test. So standard 210, there's also 230 out there, um, but and actually there's a variety of standards. We'll walk through 210 because it's the one I'm most familiar with. And it's kind of the easiest one to get a grip on. So 210 specifies a whole variety of ways you can test the fan and the equipment used to test the fan to ultimately calculate flow pressure uh, power at some speed and density. And this is a typical test chamber setup. Um, figure 12, it's, uh, it's kind of my favorite one because it's the easiest to understand. The fan's pushing. So as you can see from the left, the fan's pushing the air into this test chamber. There's settling means. Uh, it's a pretty sophisticated test. Um, we're measuring pressure drop across these uh, very, very accurately or high precision um, uh, nozzles that you know a lot about. And then uh, at the end, if you so this this system will have some system resistance on its own. And if you need a little extra boost, you can actually suck some air 
using this variable exhaust fan. So you can actually drive this thing almost down to zero pressure drop. And then you can conduct a test, which we'll now kind of walk through. So this is kind of the mechanism. This is um, this can be anywhere from a few, a couple feet in diameter to 20 feet in diameter. So it's it's a wide range. So if you're inside the test chamber, so on the other side of this wall is all the stuff that it was in the previous picture. So uh, that's kind of what a standard test configuration looks up in a lab. You see the broom over there. We cleaned it up just for this. Um, a couple of th interesting things to look at the picture on the right, and that you can see that uh, there there is a ring for, but for the most part, that inlet to the fan is smooth. It doesn't have any sharp edges per se. It's got a, uh, um, an inlet cone uh, so that you can see kind of the air is moving in there very smoothly. You can load the wheel evenly. And then notice that there's uh, a duct outlet on the fan. Um, and that length is computed to the AMCA 210 specification. So the fan, the air as it exits, in this case, air as it exits the fan has a chance to settle prior to being dumped into that, into the test chamber. So the point being, this is as best as you can get. Right? So the fan is gonna be tested to perform at its highest capability. So um, you might get into some system effect presentations or maybe you, are, maybe you already have, I can't remember your sequence. Um, so fans are tested to do the best they can possibly do. Uh, the result of that test uh, will be uh, a series of test data points. Now we call them curves, but at this point, they're just points. Um, this is the flow pressure map, and you can kind of see uh, this is kind of the general curve of a backward inclined centrifugal fan. You can see it has a peak, um, but it generally rolls over. It doesn't have a valley like an axial fan uh, with a stall with an, with an obvious stall condition. Um, so let's talk about how you would actually run this test to get this data. So that's our goal is, um, is to generate uh, a fan curve, which is a pressure flow relationship and to measure the power required to deliver that. So uh, when we get going, we're gonna have this exhaust fan cranked up to all it can do. We're gonna balance the system out and we're gonna try to drive the net pressure drop across the system to almost zero. Then we're gonna kind of trim back. We're gonna turn that exhaust fan down a little bit and that's gonna make the fan work a little harder to push the air through the test chamber. And we're gonna work our way back up. You can see we're kind of trimming the exhaust fan off and then eventually we'll turn the exhaust fan off so now the fan is just pushing against the resistance of the chamber system. And then there's actually a damper out there by the exhaust fan. So we'll start to close that off and make the fan work a little harder. And as we continue to close that damper off, we end up collecting all of these data points. So um, usually eight to 12, you can do as many as you want. Um, all right, so once we have those data points, then we can kind of draw some smooth, uh, some smooth curves through these data points. And that is what, there's the fan curve that um, we tend to portray. Now, I've also drawn a system curve and a system curve. So if you attach this fan to a system that requires this particular flow and pressure, that is the point where the fan can be expected to perform the intersection of that uh, orange line and the blue line. That is where the fan can be expected to perform. Now, once again, that data comes from ideal conditions. So uh, there might be reasons that you won't be there, but for the most part, that's our best guess. That's how we do the math. And then maybe you might recall from um, some of the fan performance presentations that if you slow the fan down, it the whole curve kind of collapses towards the origin and the intersection, but the system as long as you don't change the system, the interaction between the fan and the system curve should, the system should lie along this system, along the system curve. Okay. So um, thanks for your attention so far. I'm going to derail us for a second and talk about um, the peculiar nature of fans. So uh, fans are a little different than just about anything regulators have regulated because um, let's take a light bulb. I like to use light bulbs. If you take a light bulb and you take it to the farthest reaches of Southern Florida, uh, we'll just talk North America for a bit, and you plug that light bulb in, you screw it in the socket, and you flip the light switch on, 
that light bulb is going to work in a particular manner. And if you take that light bulb out and you ship it to the furthest reaches of, let's say, northern Canada, and you put that light bulb in a socket up there, let's assume for a second we're all got the same electricity, and you flip the switch on, in general, that light bulb is going to work the same way. And you can even argue like a refrigerator. A refrigerator in Florida, now it's warmer in Florida than it is in the far reaches of northern Canada. But if there's a human in the space and the space is comfortably moderated so the human is comfortable, in general, that refrigerator is going to work the same way no matter where you put it. Now, fans don't work that way at all. So you can take a fan and you can have it connect a fan system and it's connected to some system and it's serving some duty. And it's working spectacularly. And you can just unplug it, just disconnect it. And you literally move it across the street to some other system and you just turn it on and it can work like garbage. So how do you, how do you regulate it? We didn't do anything to the fan. We just took it out of where it was and we moved it to some other place and we turned it back on and it works great over there. It works terrible over there. Well, how do you regulate that? Because we didn't do anything to the fan and regulators tend to get a little uptight when they, well, not tight, but they, it, it's really complicated to say the regulatory approach to a product changes depending on how it's applied. That gets really complicated. And in general, the regulate, regulatory approach is we don't really want to go there, right? We just want to look at a product. It's got an SKU number. We need to, we're going to decide how to test it. And it's going to get a number. So the challenge is how do we come up with an approach that balances um, the, the relative value of the product and its ability to deliver um, desired product power, air power efficiently with this idea that if I unplug it here and plug it over there, it might not work so good. So that's kind of our challenge we're going to explore now. So in uh, what I've done with our uh, air curve, is I've said, all right, well, there's two systems. And to the best, you know, these are the tools we got. So the this orange connection here is where um, uh, uh, this system, this fan will interact with this system. And then if you unplug it, move it across the street and connect it to this system, well, this is where uh, the fan's gonna operate. So let's see what happens. So strap in, it's a complicated curve. And they're all stacked on each other. But here we go. So all these curves, all everything's done at the same speed. So we didn't, we literally just unplugged the fan and we plugged it into a different system. So here's our flow pressure curve in the previous slide. Uh, this is where we can expect the fan to operate connected to the orange system. And this is where we can expect the fan to operate connected to the um, blue system. Now, you note that in this case, this is a backward inclined centrifugal fan. Not that that makes a big difference, but it has uh, what's called an overloading horsepower curve, which means it has a peak horsepower. And you'll just note that um, in this case, uh, the maximum efficiency occurs at the point of peak power consumption. So the fan in this for this particular design this fan is delivering maximum efficiency. It's delivering the most power, air power it can for the amount of energy going in at this particular operating point. Now, the, the other interesting thing to discover is these general rules of thumb is I call this the meat of the curve. So in general, fan curves have some peak. What goes left of peak is kind of can be a, a wide variety depending on what kind of fan it is. But in general, there's this point where you'll deliver peak pressure, you'll start to roll off, and then down in this, this somewhere off of peak, because you don't want to let the fan roll into a stall condition, but somewhere off to the right of peak, somewhere without even looking at the power efficiency curve, you can pretty much assume that the fan peak efficiency is going to be somewhere in this peak efficiency range. All right, so you can kind of see that this is not necessarily, this other system is not necessarily operating as peak efficiency. So here's the interesting thing to take away from this. So let's go all the way up the efficiency curve. So you can see that this is peak efficiency. Now note that the fan is consuming less power at this second operating condition, but it's also delivering less air power. So the ratio, the, the ratio of what the fan's doing is becoming 
less efficient. And it's a significant drop in efficiency. So let's jump over to the next slide here. So these are our two systems. And you note that at the peak efficiency, it's operating over 80%. And in this system, it's, you know, well, be it's below 70. So there's a significant drop in efficiency um, by, by moving these, uh, this fan to two different systems. Now, here's the, here's one of the dilemmas. The fan efficiency curve, like that, that fans don't display uh, the characteristics of broad, fat, flat efficiency curve like some other products, in particular motors. Motors, now you, once you start, there's turn downs and you put a controller in and things get messy. But in general, when you look at the load profile of a motor, you've got a pretty good chunk of operating range where the motor efficiency is basically flat. Fans do not have that kind of operating operating profile. Um, there's there's you can change the fan design to 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 kind of broaden that efficiency curve, but there's not a huge space where the fan operates in its peak efficiency range. So um, that's something to, that that to keep. Well, well, we'll we'll get around to what the impact of that is with FBI. So. Um, each of those duty points where that operates, you has a different FEI rating. So we're back to it's an operating condition, right? FEI combines the duty point with an efficiency expectation. So the reference fan has been determined that at all those points, in particular that that greens area circle, the reference fan has a desired FEI. And um, so we have to, to beat that in order to be able to place that product on the market to operate that condition. So given some flow pressure and density, the metric specifies a required efficiency, but that's kind of behind the scenes. And the result is here's the maximum electrical power that you can consume. Now, the byproducts of that is an FBI rating can be a pair compared across fan types at the duty point. So if you want to deliver, if your requirement is to deliver some flow and pressure at some performance, uh, it, FEI doesn't care about what fan it is. It just says, here's the expected, um, here's the allowable uh, power consumption. Put as many proxies in, in, with there and compare and the FEI rating makes sense. So in general, um, the higher the FEI, uh, the more efficient the fan system at the duty point. Okay. Now, more challenges are uh, other considerations may influence fan selection. You know, when you're putting a fan system on top of a building, you have to be able to support it. So, so size matters. So there's, and sound, maybe sounds becomes the important thing. So um, none of that is incorporated into the rating because the rate, the FEI rating is, is really purely considered an efficiency and energy consumption um, perspective from an energy consumption perspective. However, from an energy efficiency perspective, um, at the duty point, FEI actually accurately captures an efficiently efficiency incentive. In other words, it incents um, designers and people selecting fans to move the fan selections in a direction that will end up in energy savings. So uh, given a flow and pressure, FEI incents providers to consume the least amount of power by, by, by landing the max allowable and then allow people to compete on the FEI rating. So if, an, if a minimum FEI 1.0, if that's the requirement, uh, then you can kind of fight on cost, but you could also argue from a value perspective well, at a higher FEI rating, maybe uh, uh, maybe there's a long-term return of value there to, to invest invest a little more to get a little higher. So you can start play the right the right economics are starting to play out. Okay, uh, let's wrap some of this up. So um, back, get let's get back just a recap. So to get to get our FEI rating, um, our input fan electrical power, our output is air power. Um, this input fan shaft power, it's in there, but you don't really have to worry about it. But along the way, there's some losses. So the, the fan industry only really cared about what was going on in the empowering casing, but there's all these other bits 
that that are not 100 efficient so um the the fan industry has focused historically on this green arrow down here at the end aerodynamic losses mechanical losses across the fan well you've got some transmission uh you have the motor and the controller all of these things have losses so and those have to be incorporated into the metric to figure out how to do that so in 214 all these uh details are um are dealt with and you can see that uh, this energy power so h is like the fan shaft power and then to get to the um, fep rating we're going to divide that by some number which is less than one um, the transmission which is not the controller but how you move the power from uh, the motor to the fan shaft and then um, divided by the efficiency of the motor now it's a little there's one little complication in that um, FEI does not, the, the efficiency of the motor and the controller are not separate. So if you have a fan system without a control, without a specific variable speed drive, the efficiency of the motor is used straight up. If you incorporate a variable speed drive into the system, then the combined efficiency of the motor and controller together is used. And there's data in 214 that accommodates that. And um, that knowledge comes basically from the motor industry, working with the controls industry and arguing that um, um, a motor control, a controlled motor system is more efficient than each of the components efficiencies multiplied in their singularity as if they were tested. So that was their argument. All right. Uh, okay, so we talked about um, these two systems. We talked about this is the meat of the curve, high efficiency. As we kind of march down the fan curve here and, and re reduce the system pressure and get some more volume, um, the efficiency of this particular fan you can see is dropping. And, and you can think, well, eventually that efficiency is going to be get below something that is acceptable and it's be, going to become not acceptable. So there is some compliant range, uh, which I won't bore you with how I calculate today, but there's some compliant range for which the fan can operate and be above FEI of 1.0. Okay, so here's this range. And then let's see what happens when we um, change the speed. So if there's some range and I, and I drop the speed of the fan, then that range um, uh, kind of paints this, uh, this red picture. So if this is compliant and I just use the fan laws to, to collapse the curve, you can see that I can paint this range across this area of the curve. So um, for this particular fan on the left, you can see that, there, that our FEI 1.0 is actually this envelope here. And then as we reduce the speed, um, energy consumption is reduced because the, of the cube law of the power consumption. And it turns out that our FEI rating goes up. So one byproduct of this is if you run a fan slow enough, just about any fan can be FEI compliant. It might not be useful, but just about any fan can be compliant. So there's a lot of information packaged in these two uh, pictures. One is uh, the fan on the left, you can see that these curves, like the, the, if you kept going, eventually this red curve would turn into what we call the bubble. But in this case, the, um, uh, the red curve is limited by this outer fan curve. And so in other words, that's as fast as you can run the fan safely. And, and manufacturers typically provide a manufacturing operating speed or uh, excuse me, a maximum operating speed or condition. So in this case, this fan's efficiency metric, the FEI, is, is kind of bounded by the capacity of the fan to operate it at any higher speed. So, so this bubble is trimmed off at the highest spot. So in here, this is kind of where manufacturers would be allowed to sell the fan. And you can see there's white pieces. Now the white piece over here to the left, technically the fan will stall. So in general, you don't want... Uh, Manufacturers don't necessarily want people operating over there anyway. So that's kind of foreboding. 
And then out here is this area out to the right here where your FEI falls below one and um, manufacturers, if under a regulatory environment, would not be allowed to promote that area of operation. Okay, now this fan on the right is, is I'm gonna call it not such a great fan, but it's a low efficiency fan. So you could operate it out here at this high speed. It would stay together mechanically, but it would be, it would not meet the efficiency requirement. So what would what would happen under a regulatory environment as proposed would be you'd have to slow that fan down until you met the regulatory requirement. So all of this chunk of this fan's capability would be not allowed to be sold into. And this would be this FEI bubble would be um, the range for which you could take that product to market. Um, you can see in a competitive environment, manufacturers would want their bubbles to be as big as possible. So there's an incentive for manufacturers to make their products more efficient. Um, And then, and in general, we uh, we think this is so. Another reason that FEI its incentives are set up properly. So we have to be always have to be careful when you create a, a regulatory metric that the desired result is what you actually want. Okay, uh, where do the numbers come from? All right. Well, there's uh, there's this reference fan system which we haven't talked much about, but let's just say you can calculate it. And then there's your our fan system, there's your fan system. Well, where do, where do, where's, where's the energy consumption for that come from? Well, uh, in the, in the standards that's phrased as FEP actual, and there's a couple ways to do it. One, you can measure it like the whole system. You can just plug it in and measure it, or you can calculate it. Now in the end, you still need to, uh, measure something, right? You have to run that 210 test. You have to get the fan performance. Um, and then you would calculate the rest of the FAI rating based on those bits, uh, the, the, the drive system, the components, and their implied efficiencies or inefficiencies. All right. Uh, there's one other separation uh, when, when you get into the, um, the details of FEI, and then there's, there's two ways to compute FEI. One uses static pressure and one uses total pressure. So as a recap, static pressure is the, um, uh, it's the stagnant pressure, or you could argue it's the potential energy of the, um, of the air as it exits the fan, whereas the total pressure is everything, which includes both uh, kinetic and potential energy. So the kinetic is captured in terms of velocity, so velocity and mass. So the velocity pressure plus the static pressure is the total pressure. So the idea here is that there are fans that typically eject air or eject gas into the atmosphere directly or into an open space or an unducted condition. And then there's fans that, um, that in typically generate a higher velocity and that velocity component can be converted back into uh, static pressure to overcome system resistance either as the air moves down the duct or through the system or through some recapture device like an EVAZE or an expansion or duct expansion. So you can take some of that velocity energy and you can convert it back to uh, pressure to overcome system resistance. Now, because as I spoke earlier, because um, regulators in particular don't prefer to regulate products and not applications, um, we were kind of forced into the, the mode of well, you know what, you're just going to have to pick it. And, and even though there are some products that are applied in, in both ducted and unducted conditions, we'll have to take the majority because we can't use an application. Uh, so that application is determined by fan type. So there's, that's kind of how so we have, we're going to have two buckets. All right. Um, how do you actually calculate? We got, we're all set up. We've done a test. Uh, we've got our system. We've got our duty point. It's time to calculate FEI. So here's a, an example from a tool that's available from AMCA. Um, it's FEI calculator. So we're going to, the blue stuff we specify. So we're going to take our duty point, what kind of fan it is. And then we're going to enter our uh, power that we measure. 
and what kind of drive system it is, what motor you've picked, and poof, out on the far right uh, comes the FBI value. Now, don't panic. In general, uh, you, as in I think the audience, uh, won't have to do these calculations. Now, that's good for you. Uh, not so good for, for manufacturers is we will. And uh, we can expect that however you interact with the various fan manufacturers and their selection software or their selection systems, uh, that will be how you, um, how you are, um, how you can discover what the FBI of a fan system is. All right, we are coming to the end. So let's review. We talked about uh, fan, FEI as a fan system energy efficiency metric. It's the ratio of either system efficiency or electrical input power with the right thing on the numerator and denominator. Greater than or equal to one is good, less than one's bad. We talked about how this metric can be used and applied in a regulatory environment. And then we delve down into the peculiar nature of fans and, and why this is more complicated than just putting a sticker on the fan and running a test, put a sticker on a fan and um, why we think this balances the interests of saving energy with applying a fan in an appropriate manner. There's tons of resources and references. Uh, AMCA has a whole FEI site, which you can, um, which you can get to. Uh, there's a fan uh, uh, video and there's various standards, which what a great time for a question. Uh, and the question is, what is the reference fan in FEI? Does it need to be the same type of fan of comparison? Um, okay, so in uh, 208, the FEI, the, the reference fan is defined. The reference fan, I'm going to say this, the reference fan isn't a fan. It's just a calculation. So the reference fan uh, uh has in fact it, there isn't a fan at all so given a flow and pressure the reference fan determines now it depends on whether you're static or total pressure so technically your answer is yes it does depend on the type of fan but depending on whether it's total or static you put the um, flow pressure and density in and it will calculate it'll say okay for you to deliver that air power the reference fan should be this efficient. And then it computes what the required efficiency is. Now, um, I would, if you're really interested, I would encourage you to open up 208. But here's let me let me just uh, divert this for a minute. And it's a great question. I, I didn't I didn't want to get too down in the weeds, but here's the problem. Here's one of the problems with fans. Um, small fans, okay, let, let's say. Why don't we just say that fans need to be 70% efficient and be done with it? Well, a really, really big fan shouldn't have too much problem getting to be 70% efficient. It should be pretty simple. Well, not simple. It should be very doable. As you take that same fan design, right? I'm not going to change any of the geometry. I'm just going to shrink the fan. As that fan gets smaller, once it gets below like one meter, it gets, it gets more complicated to uh, deliver that same level of efficiency, primarily because of scaling effects. If you, if you have a 100-inch fan, and let's say you have a, I don't know, a 15-millimeter thick piece of material, when you scale that thing down to 10 inches, or I don't know what that converts to, uh, uh, 250 millimeters, um, that blade will be wafer thin which would never be able to, to uh, survive mechanically. So you have to thicken it up. So the scaling rules don't really work. So as the fan shrinks in size, it becomes more difficult. So the idea was to relax the efficiency requirement as the fan gets smaller. Well, we don't, and then that, if you want to do it that way, now you have to incorporate all the different um, types of impellers and all that, which gets into your point of, is it the same fan type? So instead, the metric says, instead of impeller type and size, we're just going to base it on flow and pressure. So as the flow and pressure requirements are reduced, we're going to knock down the efficiency requirement. And there's a whole set of 
3D surfaces and and how that number's calculated. So it's in in general, the larger the fan, which will produce a higher flow and pressure, will have a higher efficiency requirement than a smaller fan. And that's and that's to balance the the relative value of achieving efficiency gains against the burden to the manufacturer to, to produce a higher precision fan, in other words, impose cost to meet the same efficiency, which may or may not be recognized in the market. All right. So that was a long winded answer, but you asked a great question. Um, let's see. Lisa, I think I'm ready to hand it back to you. And I don't think there's any more questions. We're finishing right on time. Uh, I'm going to stop presenting. And there actually is one question. Um, All right, far away. Uh, the question is, how will regulators implement and enforce FEI ratings? So that um, that's a great question. So there's, um, in any regulatory package, there's a whole thing that gets bolted on kind of the backside, which is, how are you going to label your product? How is this going to show up in specifications? Um, and how are we going to measure it? So um, I, we haven't been through, I haven't been through this experience yet. I only know what's written in, this, in the regulatory standards. And the idea is your fan will carry a label at the point at which it's manufactured. Um, for a good chunk of the fan industry, uh, uh, fans are built to order. So the performance required or requirements are specified. Um, so that'll appear on the fan. Then it'll also appear in, um, in product selection software. So when the system uh, is presuming that system, um, the po folks specifying the system, the government will, will say, you know, you need to pick a fan product that is FBI 1.0 or greater. So the question will be, well, how do I do that? So you'll go to some selection software, you'll pull them, so you'll have an FEI rating that's attached to the selection. Now, somehow that's got to make its way through, oh, I can't remember the, the word when you, when you bring your system up and running and you, and you go to test it. That might be a point of surveillance. There'll also be a regulatory, regulatory point of surveillance where manufacturers will be um, surveyed and sampled and their products will be sampled. So that is how kind of the, the and, and failing, failing a regulatory review I've heard is painful. So um, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, we want to avoid that. So that's how I believe uh, regulation will implement itself into all of our lives. So there's a follow-up question that ties into regulation. And the question is, what is the fan supplier's responsibility for compliance with FEI regulation? Um, let's see. Well, our, our responsibility is, is uh, ultimate and complete, right? I mean, there is no option. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, uh, the phrase is at the point of sale. So manufacturers will be required, required to label that product as it ships um, with an FEI rating that is traceable and identifiable. And ultimately that traceability needs to go to some in the DOE. It's like the DOE regulatory database, which exists up in DOE land. Um, now the one question to ponder is who is the fan manufacturer? And that is still, that's, it's not, it's not that it's undetermined, but if somebody, sh if somebody ships out a, a pile of bits, um, the theory is whoever puts the bits together becomes the fan, man, fan manufacturer and is responsible for compliance. Hmm. So All that's right. something that I think we'll, you might be interested in tracking in the future. Yeah. And we'll take this one other question that came in a little bit earlier. Um, can the different types of fans be compared on FEI? Yes. Uh, in the in standard 214, uh, one of the things regulators do is there is no such thing as an other bucket, right? It, it, all fans must be identified uh, and you can't have a miscellaneous. So in 214, all of the fans covered by a regulatory approach that is compatible with 214 are identified. So first your fan goes into that bucket and then that bucket defines 
um, how to perform the test. However, because the FBI is only concerned with the delivery to the customer, the power delivery to the customer, you can, the FBI can be compared across fan types. So in general, if you have two fans of completely different types that will be suitable in your system, you can compare their FEI rating and it will make sense. The, the one with a higher FEI rating will consume less energy for that application. Okay, got it. Um, so I have just a couple of final notes for the audience. Um, of course, we want to thank everybody for their time today. Um, absolutely want to thank Mark for your time in this um, really great presentation. Very thorough, yet very understandable. And for those people seeking the PDH credit, we will be sending you a link to the survey, which is required one hour following when we conclude here. Um, and I put this up. Um, I know, Mark, it came up in the presentation. We talked a little bit, or there was a mention of system effect. Um, Dave Malatich, a fantastic co-worker of Mark's, will be doing a fan system effect and troubleshooting presentation. I will let the audience know that it is not going to be the next presentation on November 11th. Dave has a scheduling conflict, so we will put that at a different point in the presentation calendar. Uh, we'll send everybody a notice through email so you know when to look for that. So we will have a presentation on Thursday, November 11th, same time, same location. It will just be a different topic and a different person. So please do join us for that. Um, once again, thank you very much to Odell and thank you to Mark. It's been fantastic having you join us today. Um, and I certainly hope the audience found this worthwhile. So we will see you all very soon and have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.